Mike, what's happening? Not much, Mark. How are you? I want like twenty dollars. Twenty. <laughs> well, you know, listen, you're you're in Hollywood. You can ask for more than I can. You know what I mean? I got to work on the budget. So. <laughs> I hear. I hear you. How's it going? So um, good. How about yourself? Great. So well, let's talk about the Vatican tapes then. So um, so I'll just ask, I'm going to ask you one question. Everybody else has asked you. Then I'll move on to some interesting questions. So for the people who, okay. who aren't familiar Great. with the film yet, um, just tell us a little bit about what it's about. Uh, it's about a girl who's like any of us. Um, her sin in life is just simply that she's human. She's anybody. She goes through some troubled periods, and everything around her seems to go horribly wrong. Her dad steps in, wants to help her. Uh, her boyfriend steps in, wants to help her. And after uh, dealing with hospitals and psychologists, they realize, that, of course, she needs something much more powerful. She needs the church. Mm-hmm. And Father, Father Lozano, played by Michael Pena, steps in and sees something very different in this girl that he's seen uh, in the past in, in the psychology wards and realizes mm-hmm. that he needs the help of an even higher power than he, and they bring the Vatican in. Uh, what's, what's fun about this movie is, to me – it's an origin story. It's really mm-hmm. camouflaged underneath this spooky little possession film. Right. It's a much bigger idea at the end. But to get to the end, we have to start at the beginning. And I wanted to be real simple and naturalistic. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a big departure from, you know, all my other films. And I, I wanted to do something that that slowed me down as a filmmaker. And this, you know, after reading, reading the script, I realized this was the one. Right, which actually leads directly into my next question. Um, so thank you for the most perfect segue ever. Um, th- this film is markedly different from your other films, as as you mentioned. So that was something that you were looking for to to do differently, or or was it that you got the source material and that sort of said to you, "Hey, I have to approach this in a different direction." Well, and that's a great question. There's a lot of little projects that both Brian and I were interested in doing sort of a solo project. Um, you know, though we're incredibly excited to do Crank 3, and uh, as well as a couple other projects that we can do together, there's things where, where different guys were like, ah, oh, we want to do these different things. While we were, you know, I was popping out a couple of kids, I had some time to be like, oh, I'm going to work on writing some projects. And Lakeshore came to me and dropped this on my plate, and I was really surprised. I, you know, I read the script and I said, wow, this is completely different than anything I've ever done. Why are you coming to me with this? And they just said, we, you know, we believe that this is, that you can do something like this, that you should, you know, challenge yourself. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. It was, ter- I was terrified. I was right. horrified. It really was. I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but, you know, I'm a kid who, I grew up Catholic. I went to St. Anthony, St. Patrick's, Immaculate Art Central. I read the catechism. I knew about the rite of exorcism. I love the exorcist. I, I'm a big fan of, of horror and possession movies. And, and so I, I said, hey, I'm, in a weird way, I was sort of built to direct this Catholic thriller. So I'm, I'm going to do it. I mean, I, there was a lot of hesitation and, and sure. just to the point sure. of me deciding to really go ahead with it. Um, right. And, and, and furthermore, it was a, it was a found footage script that Lakeshore had, and Lakeshore said, we're not interested in the found footage aspect of this. What we'd like to do is make this more of a cinematic experience. So we wanted to, right. you know, take the found footage out. I said, well, in order to do that, we, we're we going to have to actually change the whole POV of the movie. And they said, great. When can you start? You know, so there were a lot of things where I was like, whoa, okay. Um, you know, talk, I talked to the writers, and I just started playing with certain things and, and, and had some great help to start creating this bigger story and bring in the elements of, uh, you know, Vic Romani and Cardinal Bruin and uh, bring in different elements of the Vatican. And what a lot of people don't know um, is that there really are the Vatican secret archives. Uh, Mm -hmm. Secret is a translation from the Italian word. What it really means is the Vatican private archives, and they've had it for over a thousand years. And, and And in the Vatican secret archives, there are notes and microfiche and, 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 and photographs, film, video, mostly books, uh, but they have a 52 miles of shelf of all of this material that they've compiled over the years. 
and there is some freaky stuff down there. Uh, sure. So I, all those things were really sort of, you know, interesting to me. And, and I, I tried to get as much of that in as I could, but I also didn't want to spoil how big that world was because I think it's an opportunity to take Michael Pena and Jaime Hansu and, you know, build up the action for part two and make it more of a Devil Hunter movie. Uh, right. You know, now that Father Lozano has realized his true duty. Spoiler alert, anyway. Spoiler alert. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I just, I, I, there was so, there was so much that I liked about it, but, but ultimately I was, I was really scared. I was really, really scared to do it. Sure. Well, was it, was it daunting for you? Was there an added challenge because you were going at it solo as opposed to, you know, in this partnership that you've developed over these several films you guys have made together? Did that also add to that? It, I'm sure it did in a way. I mean, I, I was, directing plays in New York City solo for probably about five years before I ever even came to L.A. So directing solo is something that, that I have done before. Uh, but it was that I'm totally changing up sort of what I was doing as a filmmaker, and I got in my head a little bit about how am I going to be perceived and blah, 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 blah. And once I let all that go mm-hmm. and got rid of all that fear, I said, okay, let's, I, I, I want to make a slow-burning thriller, and I want to, and, and I also want to have fun with it. I don't want to completely – forget about what I've done and, and I want to have a couple winks uh, in here and I want to have fun with it. So um, that's kind of what I did. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Now, um, Olivia Taylor Dudley, who I spoke with yesterday, she was lovely. Um, she turns in an amazing performance in the film. And I was just curious how you guys work together to, you know, create such an interesting character and, and the transformation. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, this was the shortest uh, film shoot that I've been involved with uh, by far. Uh, but, but one of the luxuries that I did have is that I had time to rehearse with the actors. I had time to actually work on the, the characters and the character center and their arcs. And I was able to block the scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that's how we were able to actually build the final set uh, on, on the stage was around the blocking that, that I created. So that was a lot of fun. So I had the time to sit with Olivia and really talk about her character. I had time to play, uh, you know, and to do acting games with her, you know, like just fun acting games, you know, both with, I remember with her and Kathleen Robertson for like one hour, I said, we're just going to act incredibly horrible for one hour. I don't want you to try to act good. I want you to act really bad. And I want you to take the other person's part and flip it around. And, and what I just, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get Olivia out of her head. And once I started to do that and find out a little bit more about Olivia, Olivia told me that she really believed in possession and that she's had these very intense experiences in her life um, and, and with her family. And you could see it in her eyes, and I could actually see it in her eyes when she auditioned for me. I just knew there was something else going on in this girl. So we peeled back some of the layers and, you know, and, and rehearsed uh, these scenes and, and talked about what it was really like. Like, what would it really be like to be possessed? What is that, you know? That's something taking you over, controlling you um, on, on a physical, spiritual level. And she dove in. I mean, she got very method with it. With it. And uh, I remember doing the, the exorcism in, in the bedroom. We did, it was either six or eight days, and she was chained up half the time. And she had, she had emotional physical breakdowns where she was on the floor or crying and I you know I said hey I think we should stop and you know the actors are on the on the floor to Ray Scott and we're down there holding her and she's crying so okay we, we need to stop she's like no I, I need to stay in it anyway. I want to stay in it I'm feeling it right now I mean I'm in it I'm just, and I'm like okay let's keep the cameras rolling let's do this I'm, I mean I'm also relentless as a director so maybe, maybe I wasn't that nice but <laughs> I I, uh, I uh, you know I, I wanted to make sure that she was okay with the transformation and, and mm-hmm. it, it, she's so good in the movie because she is a believer of what was happening to Angela. Right. Um, it, sorry. <laughs> um, I lost my hand of thought for a second. I know, it's, I, know it's, I know it's pretty intense to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, going back to something you said earlier, because I, I, I very much enjoyed the film, and I love, I absolutely love the ending of the film. I think it's it's brilliant. Um, and so you mentioned a potential sequel. So is this something that, you know, we think is going to continue? Is there more of the Vatican tapes to come? 
good question. And what I always tell everybody is, is the truth. It all depends on how far this movie reaches. I know we're going to have a lot of fans of the Vatican tape. Vatican tape. I know people are going to absolutely love it. If that love is big enough to warrant a part two, uh, I think it'd be incredible. And I would be involved. I would love mm-hmm. to work with the writers and direct the next film. And, you know, like I said, have, have Michael Pena and Jaiman Hansu uh, be kick-ass devil hunters. It would be right. phenomenal. And, and to have Olivia be a part of that because she's such an anchor in this movie. And, and she's so incredibly talented. I'm just – I'm excited mostly for Olivia, for people to actually see her and, right. and see how good she is. Right. Absolutely. Um, all right. So I have two kind of uh, less intense questions to ask you, if that's okay. <laughs> First of all – no. Yeah. <laughs> um, why hasn't the Vatican upgraded to DVD or Blu-ray yet? Yeah, right. Isn't that funny? <laughs> the Vatican is just, the Vatican is getting there. Yes, they're they're still a little bit slow in that respect, right? Um, and then um, also, they, I don't they, know if you're aware they, of this. They, oh, thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but your IMDb page has under under the trademarks category for you lists your trademark as graphic sexuality and violence. So I was wondering if you think that's a fair statement. Wow. I, my wife might not appreciate that. It, <laughs> it, it might be a fair, fair statement as uh, some of the films that uh, I've directed, but I don't, I don't look at it in that way. Um, right. But, but of course, if anyone was looking through my eyes, they might jump off a cliff. So um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, I, I we can we can live with labels in Hollywood. That's what they do to us. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I personally thought it was That's a little bit. Uh, I, didn't, you know, I didn't know that. Yeah, Where does it well, say I found that? It out. If you click on your bio, underneath your, your bio, which is very short, um, there's a couple of little like mini categories, and one of them is trademark, and it has one listed, and it says graphics, sexuality, and violence, which I thought was a little overstated personally. I think there's more to it than that, but I was just curious what, you know, if you, you know, how you felt about that, so. Um, anyway, <laughs> hyper, I should say hyper hyper intelligence and brilliant cinematography. There you go. Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> I like that's, that. That's fun. You know, hey, uh, filmmaking should be fun. We're not we're not curing cancer over here, so. Right, right. Um, all right, and then um, so what's what's next on your plate? Do you have anything lined up that you can talk about, or are you still just uh, basking in the glow of Vatican tapes and going to see where it goes from there? So. Um, a bunch of little things. I, I produced a really fun movie called Urge uh, with Pierce Brosnan uh, that we're editing. We just wrapped about six weeks ago on a movie called Officer Down that Clown from Slipknot directed. I produced it. Uh, I dove in, did some camera operating, tiny little cameo as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Very much a crank-like uh, movie. Uh, Officer Down is um, based on Joe Casey's graphic novel. Uh, Chris oh, cool. Byrne did the beautiful artwork in it it's it's super super cool so i'm excited about those films uh i have what was just released was the blumhouse book of nightmares i wrote Mm -hmm. um jason blum had me write one of the stories with ethan hawk and eli roth and scott derrickson uh so that my story my story is called meat maker Mm -hmm. and uh you can you can get that uh, anyway, books are sold, and it's on audio. I did the audio recording as well, which was a lot of fun. And then, nice. um, what else? Uh, I did, I'll be in the sixth episode. I did a guest starring role on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which was super fun, because those are all my buddies, Glenn and Rob and Charlie. Right. Uh, so, so I started doing that, and, and I'm really close to figuring out what I'm going to direct next. But I'm I'm also involved in producing another film right now. So as soon as that gets underway, I need to decide what I'm going to do next. Makes sense. So basically, you're what you're saying is you're very lazy and you hardly work at all. Yeah, I'm just a bu- I'm a bum. I'm a bum. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. it. And I'm, and I'm trying and I'm trying to I'm trying to start a, my uh, my hops again here. We 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 have this old hops farm up here, uh, a mm-hmm. couple hundred acres and. We're trying to reclaim the land and, and grow some hops. Wow. So just on top of everything else, a little farming to keep you busy. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Keeps, <laughs> keeps the kids down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, Mark, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it, Mike. Take care.